to her. Usha Anand Subramaniam, the new MD and CEO of Punjab National Bank joins us now. Uh, Ma'am, uh, good, good morning and thank Very you for joining morning. us on the show. Everyone would like to know, you know, what would be your five or three or five pronged agenda as you enter the bank in order to solve the uh, asset quality issues that the bank has been plagued with for so long? Uh, well, PNB comes as a bank, you know, the, with, with uh, more problems of uh, asset quality. I, I mean, for one would say the traditional methods of approach, I mean, have not yielded great results. So as I take over, I would uh, uh, look at some more innovative ways of tackling the NPAs. I mean, I mean, I've just, it's, it's a few hours that I've been yes. in the bank, but uh, I think the, the kind of the ready-made solutions are not getting the right kind of um, answer or the results for the bank. So, I mean, I have already uh, asked my team and there has to be a lot of out-of-box thinking and on how the, the stressed borrower and the stressed bank meet and uh, how we can take forward. Okay. Uh, well, uh, before I come to the specific questions on bank NPLs itself, uh, uh, Usha, how have you looked at the reforms announced itself? What stands out? Was anything different? The Indra Dhanush yes. announcement. See, Lata, for one, I would say that uh, First time there has been a comprehensive announcement that has been made, which we need to really appreciate because always it used to be in bits and pieces, maybe, um, uh, you know, maybe a capital infusion announcement or something here and there. So but it's also a collation of already known announcements. But, you know, it has been made comprehensive. I think there is... I mean, we need to look at positive because there's one, there are two ways of looking at it. But I, for one, would look at it more positively because it's a beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, any announcement or any reform measure has uh, two sides of the coin. You, you have the good and the bad. But uh, as a public sector, uh, you know, banker, I would look at it as uh, a beginning of the reform. See, when in 93, when 91, 92, when the reforms were made, again, when the deregulation set in, private bank play, private players were around, there was again, you know, mm -hmm. what will happen and the automation, all these things. So today, these kind of seven, um, in a way, I would say it's a step moving forward mm -hmm. in the reform agenda. But don't you think that some of the issues like, say, the bank board's bureau, don't you think that adds an unnecessary level of bureaucracy and could perhaps slow down the decision-making process? I mean, uh, see, ultimately, you need to get into professionalism. Already, I mean, all these days we have seen bureaucracy dominating. It's going to be a, a set of people coming in. It's not the bureaucrats alone. Who, I mean, hardly a representation or one or two people are going to be there because they form part of the setup. I mean, they run the ministry, so they ought to be there. Yeah. So the rest of it, if the professionals chosen, and of course, the regulator is going to be there, the rest of them, if you really bring some experts, professionals, I think that will give some uh, fillip to the, you know, the mm. way the selection happens, the way the non-official directors, because what plagues uh, the uh, public sector banks is, from my point of view, it is the, the board. Mm. You know, you need to have real professionals running the board and a lot of professionalism so needs if, to yeah, be inducted. If, if this bureau is able to put in a, a lot of independent directors, you are uh, confident that it will make a difference to the way banks are run? It will make because when you get say, for example, you place an IT expert, you place a legal expert, you place a HR expert. These are the things that the bank wants these days. It is not, you know, the mundane kind of directors who come and attend the board meetings. I, for one, would, uh, uh, you know, voice for and demand for senior professionals mm. because that is what is required. You have a whole lot of IT, but it's a kind of a routine thing. What new things can come on the table? And if you have a HR expert coming in and telling, see, the public sector banks are in the, you know, the, the HR has to go miles. Mm. You know, the, the manage, I, I wouldn't call it management, manage, I call it maintenance. Mm. So the development aspect, because, mm. see, you are in a very different situation now. One, that uh, the new wave of the new genre of banks coming in will see talent migration mm. so how are you going to nurture talent how are you going to uh, retain talent it's not only acquisition the next two steps are more important so where an HR expert sits on the board is going to give you you know Absolutely. I mean I wouldn't say so you, you, you lay great store by the quality of the board yes I go by professional expertise on board okay. I mean what not the number or the heads mm. All right. but you, you were in Bank of Baroda a few years ago right uh, how would uh, the bank accept uh, two private sector honchos 
again it's an experiment mm -hmm. see i i mean it, it, you know from a routine there is a kind of a disturbance happening mm -hmm. but let us see if the disturbance is for good i mean nobody has said it is it is successful or not successful time will tell mm -hmm. so i mean maybe it is a kind of an experiment and uh, well, uh, I mean, we, we ought to wait and see. You know, one of the key disappointments of the Indra Dhanush program was that there was not too much emphasis on how to tackle the NPA situation. There was not a, no stress given on the state discoms issue, the power sector issues. You mentioned that you would come out with innovative ways to tackle the we NPA need to system. think. I said we need so to think. What, what in your mind could be those ways? See, um, the tackling of NPAs mainly, I would say, I mean, it, is, it has two parts. One is the the governmental intervention or wherever they can. I mean, it's not that everywhere in a corporate they can't do that. Maybe as this com, yes, maybe they, uh, as uh, Lata was some time before telling that, you know, the power minister had a dialogue with Haryana chief minister and Rajasthan chief minister. I mean, you can't on a perennial basis fund the discoms. Mm -hmm. So we need, see, what, uh, why discoms have failed? Because they, they fail to, you know, the, revise the tariffs. Yeah. Because, that, see, again, the discoms have to be professionalized. Mm -hmm. You may have corporatization of uh, discoms. At the end of the day, who sits there matters. It has got to be, you know, professionalized. And, you know, obviously the tariff revision happens, the pass-through happens. There are no concessions at the time of, you know, elections like farmer waiver of electricity bills and all, all those kind of things happening. So it needs, even actually they also need a serious reform process and tariff revision has to be, you know, uh, top on their agenda. Yeah, but if and that, we through. have to wait for state governments to be able to enforce that discipline See, my worry on is, my, I have a different worry because we are all funding the, you know, private generation companies of, uh, you know, various kinds. And they have no way to sell. From where they buy the power, the power is bought, but if they don't pay them back, mm. I think, you know, you see the, you know, the private uh, generators, generating companies is also coming into the you know a bigger stress okay no fair point I guess that's the reason why the um, uh, government is so worried about uh, discom uh, uh, financial and the second health. part I was uh, answering to Sonia is that uh, uh, you know more of it is has to come from the banks have to think for the, but each one has a different no, that is the point account. you know Usha, clearly the public sector banks had a giant advantage in terms of accessing deposits their reach is uh, several fold what the public uh, private sector banks are but look at the current and savings account of HDFC Bank of ICICI Bank just about everyone has set themselves low-cost targets and they have won it most of the uh, uh, public sector banks barring state bank uh, and maybe to some extent PNB have actually lost their deposit taking advantage they've all relied on bulk deposits how you know this was a sitting duck of an advantage they had they had a huge branch network how was that lost and how will that be regained um, I would say, for example, in the Punjab National Bank, a point in time when I was executive director, we had about, uh, you know, a, a, a mammoth, uh, you know, volume of uh, bulk deposits to the extent of almost 80,000 crores sitting on the books. Today, it is just 1% of the total deposit. But how did they lose it in the first place? When you have, you know, 10 times, 20 times more branches than a private sector bank. And an HDFC bank, in terms of branches, is hardly comparable. 50% current account savings account all the time. How did you lose it? I will it? tell you why it is. Because um, uh, in public sector banks, I mean, I may sound a little uh, uh, harsh, mm. we don't have the culture of sales and service. I mean, I'm very, mm. you know, candid on that. Mm. Mm. But can what, that be changed? Yeah, that, that is what is to be changed. Every public sector bank has to transform itself. It's a transformation process where the, they need to change and become a sales and service organization mm. see no more people were all sitting in a seller's market mm. so it's still that you know the mindset of a seller's market has to be totally rehashed mm. and you have to feel that you are a part of the buyers market and uh, the sales and service culture has got to be inculcated that is a challenge okay. there's a real challenge in public sector banks because okay. that would only get you casa see for example Punjab National Bank has got 7,000 branches and about 8,500 ATM that's a that's a size that maybe mm. next to um, the state bank group it would come in but uh, how you know I mean the, the challenge is I, that's what in mm. <clears throat> my address I said mm. that you know we need to become a smart bank mm -hmm. with sales and service culture that would be the 
Okay. The, the transformation that we need to undertake. You did mention that, you know, you made two interesting points for the power space where you said discoms need to be professionalized and tariff revision needs to be on top of the agenda. The other space that has been hit very hard is the metals or the steel sector and the exposure that banks have is immense to this sector. What do you think could be done for this pocket? See, here some government intervention will be certainly required in terms of uh, anti dumping duties and, you know, import, uh, you know, hiking the import tariffs, those kinds. I mean, certainly there is a role for the government. What has been done is a little, min you know, I would say it's too little. Two and a half percent was announced. Two and a half percent is too little mm -hmm. uh, for this. And uh, here, uh, I mean, I say uh, the government can support by you know kind of uh, creating a barricade for uh, you know imports mm. of uh, cheaper steel or whatever oh, i mean that's the major sector mm. that's one part of it secondly otherwise it looks it'll take time to revive this mm -hmm. you uh, although you ha you had this gap at uh, mahila bank you must have been in touch with your colleagues in all other banks what is the sense you're getting even if fy16 is a washout as far as npls are concerned in the second half as well we are going to have a few more npls than we had in the first half see banking is one where you cannot live without npls see, no i'm asking you the trend ah, is, the, the, is, the, is it at least reversing or are we going to keep rising at a fast pace um i mean it, it depends on how the economy is going to move mm -hmm. i mean you see i mean generally we hear those those cliched words the green shoots are up and you know people say that here and there we are seeing whether more shoots will give place, mm. will tell that, mm. uh, you know, the, the NPL or, I mean, again, I would say when you take the percentages, it's a denominator effect. Mm. If your credit growth picks up, mm. then possibly there will be, in terms of the percentages that we look at, the denominator could uh, help. Uh, but that is, again, you know, a jargonistic and a mathematical way of looking at it, just working out a percentage. But the real reduction has to happen. And uh, as I took over uh, at the Punjab National Bank, what I could see was after eight quarters, mm. there has been, uh, I would say, eight basis point reduction in uh, gross NPAs and one basis point reduction in, mm -hmm. I mean, I said, I said, if the trend continues, mm -hmm. I said we can be moving, I won't say the clouds are over. Mm -hmm. There is a small, you know, streak of this that gave me, an, mm -hmm. and the provision coverage ratio also went up. So with all these things, there is some, you know, some light, or mm. some hope. Mm. You have hope is a great companion, okay. but we have to see how we journey through. All right. Mm. Usha, thank you very much for thank dropping you. in in our studio thank and you. all the very best thank you so much. for your innings Thank you so at much. Punjab and um, Punjab National Bank is a great bank, so how we move forward as a, as a, as a big team to take forward and make a difference in you know, whatever concerns that you we have. You are big enough to make a difference to the nation, so <laughs> yeah. all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we have to take a break. On that note, thereafter, Amit Rati will join in for a curtain.